Welcome back to the audio workshop. In this exercise, you can learn to add a song selection user interface to your audio programs. Then you can offer users potentially unlimited lists of songs to browse, select, and play. Now here you see a list and when the user clicks one, that song starts playing. We're going to start with the bare bones of an example.html file. So let's go ahead and start with the HTML inside of the body element. We'll put the start of a select element, go down a couple of lines and make sure we close it. Now we're going to give it an ID equal to my list. And then we're going to populate it with a few option elements. We're going to give those value attributes. That way when each one is clicked it's going to send a value to the program. Make sure we close those option elements as well. Now for the label that I want the user to see, that's only what they're going to see in the HTML, I'm going to put the name of my first song, which is Jam On It. Then I'm going to put the actual title of the track as it appears in the folder system. Now let me show you my folder system and you'll have a better picture of what's going on. So this is my audio folder. And you can see the names of my MP3 files there. Now you might be working with AUG files and that doesn't even matter. So you can see jam on it has underscores in between the words. So I'm going to make sure I take that into consideration in the value. In the value I'm going to put the underscores because the program is going to be sent this value when the user changes anything in this list, when they select any of the options in the list. So this value is going to be sent to the program in JavaScript. And that's how I'm going to fetch the mp3 file that corresponds to this option. I'll be able to fetch that stream and play it. So let's go ahead and add a few more option elements. Now I'm only going to add four, but you can have a giant long list of songs the person can scroll through and play. Okay, so that's all of the HTML. Now just remember that we're going to add some event handling to make my list have a change event. And on that change event, we're going to gather up the value for what the user has selected and we're going to play that track. It's that simple, man. Now up in our JavaScript, we're going to do the same thing that we've been doing all throughout these audio tutorials by initializing the audio that's going to play in JavaScript. So we put window.addEventListener for the load event of the window. We're going to run a function called initAudio. And above our listener, let's go ahead and put that function into place. And just like we've been doing the whole time, we're going to initialize some variables now the same as all of the other setups we've had, we're going to put the audio object into place, specify its source attribute, and the first file that we're going to play by default, and this is only if you want a file playing by default. If you don't want the player to play by default, you can just comment out those two lines. But since we want the first track to play by default, we're going to make sure we put the source equal to this string, which is the directory audio forward slash jam on it dot mp3 and then we say audio dot play now we're going to add some new event handling that we haven't added yet so we create a new variable my list which you can put this variable up here where we're initializing all of our variable names and then remove this var reference so my list is equal to the object reference for this element here on the page to select element my list variables now representing this object, the select list. So we add an event listener for the change event. Anytime a user changes anything in the list when they select a different song to play, we're going to run a function called change track. Now let's go ahead and add that function, change track. And in between the parentheses where we normally put arguments coming in, we're just going to reference the event which is the change event for my list. And we're doing that so within the function when we're referencing we can say event.target to grab the element that we need to which is my list and then we say dot value to scoop up whichever of these values is being selected. So once we have that value we put it as the source for the audio object. We say audio.source is equal to a directory plus event.target.value plus the extension which is .mp3. 
So basically you can think of it as taking one of these values and putting it right here into place, right there between the plus signs, just like we did here. So this is just a way to make the source attribute dynamic. Then once you have a new source attribute for your audio object, then you say audio.play, which makes the new song play. Now let's go ahead and run a quick test. Okay, beautiful. Now, what you can do is go into the select element and put the size attribute and set it to four because I have four songs. That means all of them will be showing by default. You see? Now all of them, all of the titles show. When this is set to one, you can see if I refresh, there's only one showing. If I set this to eight and then refresh, you'll see the list allows for four more option elements to show by default on the page. And if there's not enough room for all of the songs that you have, it just puts an automatic scroll bar here. Okay, so that's pretty much the guts of the tutorial. When the user selects any of the options in the list, whichever option they select, that value needs to be sent to the program. Now some of you might ask, how do I make the song playlist label each song? Like when one song ends, how do I make it go to the next song in the list and show the user highlight which song is playing in the list as each song ends? Now what you'd have to do is combine this tutorial with the tutorial that we did about programming array-based playlists. And you'll have to have your audio end event listener for the event listener for when the audio ends. You'll have to have that in place. So when the audio ends, all you have to do is switch track like we did in the other tutorial. And then you're going to update the value that's going to be for this my list. You, you pretty much just change its option. Now you can make it work to where whenever the audio ends, you change the option through JavaScript and then you can have your change track function fire off on the change event. Because if you programmatically change the value for this select list, then this change track function is going to fire off because this change event handler is here. I think some of you might bring up questions about how to make the playlist run in an automated fashion and that's how you would do it. Now you can also go up here and take my list and go ahead and style it by targeting that ID in the CSS and that gives you this. What? Now with the CSS there's a whole lot more you can do with these you can actually knock out the scroll bars if you don't scroll bar there to show it all or you can style the scroll bars in a custom way using CSS you can you can style every aspect of this select list and furthermore it doesn't even have to be a select list these could be paragraph elements here or little divs and I can put event handling for those divs for the click event. So when and or mouse down event. So whenever a user mouses down on any of those elements, I'm going to make my program send a value for that element to some JavaScript function that's going to change to that track. So keep in mind, you don't even have to use a select list, but that's the popular thing that programmers use for audio programs and giving long lists. These could actually just be, you don't need a select list at all. These could just be divs sitting on the page creating a list. 